Welcome to the warm-up show presented by U.S. Plastics as we talk Lima Central Catholic Thunderbird football for the 2015 season coming up. I'm Patrick Hamler, and joining me here on the field is Lima Central Catholic head coach Scott Palti. And coach, um, just talk about uh, last year. You guys had a great run. Uh, you've kind of had a full year, kind of get your uh, everything set. How'd the off season go? Um, for you guys. Yeah, you know, there's clearly a transition with a uh, new head coach, you know, in the first year like I was last year. But our kids did a really, you know, really good job of adjusting what we wanted to do uh, with the schemes offensively and defensively. And, you know, I thought as the year went on, we really got better. You know, I thought we improved quite a bit. We had a pretty nice season going eight and two, making the playoffs. Um, clearly we lost in round one, which is what we wanted to do. But, I, you know, really happy and pleased with our effort and commitment. And that carried over to the off season. We had a really good turnout in the weight room in the winter and the spring and the summer. And you know, we've got a good group of kids that are ready to step up and fill needed positions and uh, do, what do what they need to do to be successful. Was there any type of um, rebounding or anything that needed to happen after any of the losses? You guys had a tough loss against St. John's week two of the season. Also had a, a, a tough defeat against Spencerville. Was there anything kind of retooling or anything that had to happen during the season or was it just keeping it steady? You know, our, our kids realized, you know, in, in the game, especially early in the season, week two, we lost St. John's. There was things that, that we needed to do better. You know, we, had, we didn't really execute as, as well as we liked on offense. Uh, we got lined up in some of the wrong spots on defense. And you know, after coming off a loss, I think it's really easy, you know, to get a high school kid's attention after losing a game. And we had some great weeks of practice after losing those two football games. And I think the next week we played really well each time we lost. And I was real proud of them that to respond and uh, get back out on the field and correct their mistakes and execute you know, the way we asked them to do. And you know, they did a really good job of that. What defines a great week of practice? We hear coaches talk about that a lot. You know, after loss, we had a great week mm -hmm. of practice. Talk about that a little bit. What does that mean? No, I, I think it goes with a lot, a lot of the mental. During the season, a lot of the mental and the focus part of it because you have a game plan. Uh, you may be putting in some slight different scheme or doing something different. And, you know, just how fast and how well they pick up on what you're doing for that week. And then when you're executing in practice, their ability to do that without having a lot of have a lot of stoppages or, you know, go back over something because of a mistake. You know, just the mental part of the game. They're able to get to it right away and we can get through practice without, without a lot of stops and execute what we want to execute for that week. I, I think that's a, that's a good week of practice for us. You know, coming into your first week of practice, what have you noticed so far? What's kind of jumped out to you as the kids have gotten together? I've been really happy with, with our effort. You know, we've done a, a good job of coming into camp in shape and ready to play. Our kids have really done a great job of hustling, um, doing what we have to do, doing drills hard, conditioning hard. And that's probably been the most impressive thing to me with the spots we have open on offense and defense, that our kids have shown up here ready to compete and uh, try to win a position. How are we looking at in terms of numbers? We talked to some coaches, and the numbers have been kind of back and forth with the teams. You guys, how are your numbers looking? This we year? are at 37. You know, and clearly you'd like to have a few more guys, but we know we're really fortunate. We have 37 guys who who want to be here and work hard every day. And as we were coaching staff, we were commenting the other day that we only have 37 guys, but we have 37 guys who, who really want to be here, and they're committed, and their effort's good, and we don't have to worry about having them show up for practice. You know, they're out here each day and working hard, and you know, I appreciate that. And you know, we have having 37 or 37 kids that really want to be here. I'm okay with that. We have Ethan O'Connor returning at quarterback. How's the offense going to look with uh, any holes that need filled? You know, one of the, we put a new offense in last year, going to the the spread offense and. You know, our kids, it was an adjustment to them coming off of, you know, different offense from previous seasons. And now going into the, this year's camp, we have looked 100 times better. You know, we were a lot more in sync. You know, it's amazing what another year will do with our offense. You know, the kids learning where to be and when to be there. And especially having Ethan back for year two. He's done a great job of being a leader. And, you know, we've got some holes to fill. You know, we have one returning starter in our, in our receiving core. Um, we have to find a new running back. We do have three offensive linemen to build around up front and Jamison Bradley and Trey Callahan and Ryan Rhodes. So that's a nice place to start. But we've got some, some pretty good athletes that can catch the football out there along with Nick Tafflinger, our returning starter. So we think we got some guys that can make plays. Along with O'Connor, how have you seen some of the other seniors that have been on the team step up and assume leadership positions this season? Our leadership's been great. Our guys have done a great job since the end of last season until now. They're our seniors, there's nine of them, and they've all done a really good job of doing their part and, and being accountable and setting the example and the tone that we want our kids to you know, practice, compete, lift, and you know, they've done a great job with that. And I think they realize you know, we're going to have some new guys in there. We only have five guys in our junior class, and so we're going to have some, some sophomore starters. And I think they understand that and have taken those guys under their wing and you know, helped them get in the right position and encouraged them. And you know, I, I couldn't be any more pleased with our seniors than I have been so far. 
Looking at practice, OHSA rules have uh, sort of changed the way that uh, coaches look in terms of you know how many times you can hit in a day and how many often how many times you can often do that. Sorry, um, has that changed your approach on how you have uh, prepared the kids, or is that something that you've already uh, sort of adapted with knowing the changes were coming? Yeah, I think fortunate for us, we you know I think we kind of had that schedule last year. You know, we we hit a couple times a week. And during the week, um, we only go out in pads twice, so you know that's kind of right in right in there with, in queue with the rules we're trying to pass. Uh, two days we practice at one time. We don't come back morning and night. We have one one session. We take a break in. So I think you know, it shouldn't really affect us much. We we pretty much practiced like that last year, anyways. We plan on practicing it this year, but you know, obviously I can see how some teams that could be an adjustment phase for them to limit their practice time and keep an eye on it. But we know we're fortunate. I don't think that's going to be an issue for us. Your first three games this year are going to be on the road. Adelaide at St. John's and at Ada. How is that going to impact your uh, preparation for the team with the first three weeks of the season? Oh, those are, those are three good football teams with, with good good history and good tradition and good players. And you now we're going to have to become ready to play right there week one. You know, maybe Lida, you know, another Lima team. That's going to be quite a battle. Uh, Delphus is always historically good, and so has Ada the last uh, you know decade or more. So those are three good football programs. So we're going to have to you know right from the get go. We're ready to play football and ready to execute and, and be at the top of our game if we want to have any success. Do you feel like those teams maybe uh, offer you opportunities to improve upon maybe some shortcomings you guys have or some of the maybe weaker spots that you're seeing right now at camp? I know you're hoping week one you come out as ready to play as you're going to be, and then like you know most coaches will tell you your greatest improvement is week one to week two, and you know that's what we're hoping to have. We, we hope we can get better each week. You know that's really our goal. You know, that when we look at our team week ten. Uh, compared to week one, that we are night and day better than we were when we trotted out there that week one ball game. So that's really our goal each week, try to get better, try to improve in something, and uh, hopefully we can do that. I thought we did a good job of that last year. I'm hoping that continues this year. Have, you, have the kids have any reaction to the fact that you only have four home games this year? Yeah, it's a challenge. Obviously, you usually get that five, but that's just the way it worked out, uh, having four home games. Clearly, you know, our seniors would like to play more home games, but – you know, they're high school kids playing football. They'll, they'll play any you know anywhere that you tell them to play as long as they can compete on a Friday. So I don't think that's a real issue with them. And you know, it might be more issue with me because I'm really not a big fan of riding on school buses and we've got some journeys. So I can honest with you, I probably have more of a problem with it than they do. So we'll see how that goes. All right, LCC coach, Scott Palti, coach, thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, when we come back, Matt Fink, we'll talk to some of the T-Birds players right here on the warm-up on WOSN. Welcome back to the warm-up presented by U.S. Plastics Store, joined by a couple of LCC T-Birds seniors. It is Ethan O'Connor, quarterback and safety to my right, and on the end there is Jamison Bradley, center defensive end. Ethan, let's start with you. How's training camp been treating you in your senior year so far? Um, it's It's been hot. It's yeah. been <laughs> not real breezy, and uh, I, I, it's been hot. It's, uh, it's been going pretty well. The seniors have gotten great leadership. Um, we got a lot of freshmen that are stepping up, a lot of sophomores that are stepping up. So uh, we're all looking forward to this year. And, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Jameson, is that something that started at the end of last season? As soon as, you know, week 11 ended and you guys lost, then you're thinking about this season and the seniors are getting together, or junior, you were junior at the time, right. but, you know, the upcoming seniors are getting together focused on the season. Is, did that go down? Oh, that definitely went down. Um, we had in our mind since, since day one last year, we knew that we were going to have to step up and be leaders this year. So, no matter we were leaders last year, but we have a bigger pedestal this year. So, we were ready to take it on, and we're ready to accomplish our goals. Ethan, coming off a great junior season, what are some of the things that you have to do to make sure you repeat that success and improve even more in your final year with the T-Birds? Um, same thing as last year: just lead by example, and everyone else will follow. Uh, if you do that, then the team will come closer together. We'll be family, and then we'll be able to accomplish our goals. Jameson, what's the line looking like? Is it a big group, and uh, how are you guys going to protect Ethan and get to the quarterback on the defensive side, too? <laughs> uh, on offense, you know, first first prior priority is always protecting Ethan no matter what. So mm -hmm. we might be little, but you better believe we're coming with some fierce attitudes, and we're not taking anybody for granted. So, But on defense, you know, we got, we got a couple of great guys. You know, Celine Martin, he's definitely stepping up. Um, Ryan Rose, Trey Callahan, you know, we're all going to come out big and strong and 
definitely uh, show you guys something on Friday and Saturday nights. Looking forward to seeing it. Ethan, some scheduling oddities this year. You got three games on the road. You only have four home games in a row. And then you only have four home games total. And you got like three on the road, three at home. Does that affect you at all? Or you're just a high school football player? You don't care where you're playing? Uh, we're, we're just going to play football. Uh, it doesn't matter who we're playing. I mean, the better we're going to have better competition this year. So we're all going to be excited. And yeah, we just want to play football. Jameson, what was the experience like in the postseason last year? I, I know it wasn't the outcome you guys wanted, but you had a great season and played a tough game against Van Buren. Um, you know, postseason is always a great time, always making good runs. It's always fun. But this year we definitely try to come out, make a deep deep run in the playoffs, hopefully get to state. That's uh, always the goal, and LCC has a good chance of doing that this year with some strong senior leadership. Time for a break here on the warm-up. When we come back, I'll be joined by a couple more T-Bird players. Third and final down on the warm-up from Lima Central Catholic, presented by U.S. Plastic Stores. Three more seniors take a seat with me here. It's Trey Callahan to my right on the line, senior Ryan Rhodes in the middle, also offensive line, defensive line, and Nick Tafflinger on the end, wide receiver safety. Trey, let's start with you. Camp, less than a week in here. What's the verdict so far? How's the team looking? Uh, I think we're looking pretty good. I think we've got a nice chance of, you know, making our run to state, having a really great season. But... It's my senior year. Regardless of what happens, I'm just looking to really have fun. Ryan, year two with Coach Palti, is is it is there a difference between year one and year two of where you know the program a little better, what he wants to do, what he wants to accomplish? Uh, well, he's always been a good coach. He's always strived for greatness. So there's never really been a big change between year one and year two. It's just kind of the, our level of maturity as a team. But he has done great on both years, and I'm just hoping for another great year with him. Nick, you guys have some scrimmages coming up, uh, Allen East on the 14th, and then a, looks like a try scrimmage on the 21st before week one. What do you hope to get out of scrimmages? Is it nice to go in pads against somebody besides your own guys? Yeah, we actually have a scrimmage against each other on Saturday, too, the red versus white scrimmage. That'll be a good evaluation to see uh, who, who gets the spots on the varsity team. But, yeah, the scrimmages are real good because, you know, it'll – get us ready for real games and it's teams we're familiar with you know we're playing Van Buren who we played in the playoffs last year Bath we played in the opener and we're familiar with Alan East, so it'll be a good test for us. Trey what do you would you say this team's biggest strength is right now as you guys get ready for week one? Uh, I think it's or the maturity we have in our seniors we have a lot of good seniors coming back this year that are good leaders we have a uh, our good quarterback Ethan uh, he's really good back back there he knows what he's doing uh, he's just that's really it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely a mature player. Ryan, what is one area you'd like to see improved upon between now and when you take the field for real? Well, I would like to see some of our young guys definitely step up a little more. And um, not saying that they're immature or anything. It's just a level of experience. And it, in these next couple of weeks, they'll probably grow into it and complete the whole entire team and the, all the 22 spots on the field. So I guess that may be one thing that what I would be looking at. So. Right. And Nick, we'll close with you. Goals for this season? Of course, every, uh, everybody's goal is to get to state. Everybody's so goal is to get to state, but I tell them week one is all I'm focused on right now. I just try to take it one game at a time. You know, of course, we'd love to – we haven't made past the first round forever. That, that to me, would be a big goal. But just getting to the playoffs, taking it one week at a time, and working hard every day. Very mature answer from a mature group at LCC. Thank you guys for letting us come out. Wish you the best of luck this Thank year. You. That's going to do you, it sir. for this edition of the warm-up presented by U.S. Plastics. For Patrick Kamler, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on the West Ohio Sports Network.